On that woeful weekend in May 1994, Rubens Barrichello nearly shared a similar fate to his mentor Senna. In his second season as an F1 driver, Barrichello hit the wall at 140 miles per hour, leaving him unconscious. He woke up in a hospital bed hours later with Ayrton Senna by his side. Ayrton was proud of what Barrichello brought to Brazilian racing, even celebrating Barrichello's first podium with him at AIDA in 1993. For me, he was even a mentor, so it's really something else, and uh, I think the legacy and the fact that he was a super driver, probably the best one that we ever seen, so it's him. his legacy is immense. Barrichello joined Ferrari in 2000, the year of his first Grand Prix win in Germany. He won eight more times with Ferrari, so nine in total, and finished second to teammate Michael Schumacher in 24 Grand Prix. Symbolic of his time with the Italian outfit was the 2002 Austrian Grand Prix. Leading on the last lap, he was told to move for second-placed Schumacher. Ever the gentleman, Barrichello obliged. But deep down, he knew he was too good to be a supporting driver. And in 2006, he joined Honda. Ferrari replaced him with another Brazilian, Felipe Massa. This way. Ferrari was full of highs and lows for Felipe Massa as well, though the boy from Sao Paulo admits joining the team was a dream come true. I always dreamed to have a Ferrari in my garage, even when I was a kid, you know? And then when I was looking to a Ferrari on the road, it was like a dream come true. So that's why it's so special, you know, to be part of the, the Ferrari family, Ferrari brand, and uh, to complete uh, 100 Grand, Grand Prix for Ferrari and to be the, the one of the drivers who drove most for this for this car. Massa took home 15 pole positions, 11 wins and 36 podiums for the famous Italian team. His first win was at Barrichello's hometown, Interlagos, where he became the first Brazilian to win a Grand Prix since Senna in 1993. In 2007, Schumacher retired and Kimi Raikkonen moved in. But like Barrichello, Massa was relegated to the supporting role. But Raikkonen wasn't Schumacher, and Massa knew he could outrace the Finn. 2008, and Massa nearly won the world title himself if it wasn't for one of the sport's most scandalous moments. At the 2008 Turkish Grand Prix, Rubens Barrichello became the most experienced driver in F1, making his 257th start. But that year, all eyes were on another Brazilian, Felipe Massa. Massa was in the hunt for a world title and comfortably led at Singapore, until Nelson Piquet Jr. deliberately crashed into the wall. With the safety car out, Massa's lead disappeared as the gaps between the racers were nulled and Piquet's Renault teammate Fernando Alonso won the race instead. The staged crash, known as Crashgate, resulted in the banning of Renault team boss Flavio Briatore. Massa ended the year losing the world title to Lewis Hamilton by one point. In 2009, another Brazilian inadvertently ended Massa's quest for the elusive world championship again. When a suspension spring fell off Rubens Barrichello's car at the Hungarian Grand Prix, it struck Massa in the head, causing a near-fatal injury. His family, Ferrari colleagues, even Barrichello himself, rushed to his side. 
Massa survived that ordeal and came back in 2010 with renewed vigor and a new teammate, Fernando Alonso. However, the situation was the same. A low point came at the 2010 German Grand Prix, where Ferrari engineer Rob Smedley radioed, Fernando is faster than you. Can you confirm you understood that message? Ferrari was fined $100,000 for forcing Massa to move over for Alonso. And Massa finally did get the message. In 2014, he signed with Williams. Rubens Barrichello left F1 its all-time leader in starts with 322. His milestone 300th, however, ended on the first lap. And in 2012, his mentor's nephew took his spot on the Williams team. Bruno Senna's arrival meant Barrichello had to look for work outside of F1 after 19 years. He found it, first with the IndyCar series and then Stock Car Brazil. It's been a fantastic feeling, uh, the moving across, and uh, I'm just uh, enjoying every every second. It's uh, it's not as easy as it, as as we may think. Just uh, just to sit on another car with a different engine and different everything, but I think I'm coping quite well. Felipe Massa joined Williams in 2014 and made his 200th start on his team's home track at Silverstone. But like Barrichello, in his milestone race, he crashed out without finishing a lap. Things are different now for Massa. He's the veteran on the Williams team, and while his relationship with Valtteri Bottas is perhaps more amicable than teammates have passed, his goal remains the same. I mean, the target is always to win. The target is always to fight for the championship, to win races, you know, that's uh, is a target, is a target I always had. Neither Rubens Barrichello nor Felipe Massa ended up the new Ayrton Senna, but who has? So if there was a knock against the two, perhaps it's that they were too loyal to their Ferrari team. Barrichello raced 104 times for the Scuderia in six seasons. Massa 140 in eight. If they had a chance to be team number ones, who knows how far they'd go. But loyalty in any sport deserves recognition and esteem. Call this Brazilian clash a draw and let them both enjoy a well-deserved title for a change. Wow.